Okay, so how's everybody doing? So I want to talk about view blocks, like view blocks um, in this particular case on the shelf layout or any layout for that matter when you want to, or when you've compressed space, but then now you want to make it feel larger. I know that sounds strange or almost like an oxymoron, you know, you compress the scene and now I want to make it look larger. Like what, what does he mean? So, um, view blocks uh, can uh, uh, be um, achieved with various methods. You can use trees, or you can use buildings, you can use a shack, you can use other trains, uh, a yard. I mean, there's a lot of creative ways that uh, you can create like a block uh, uh, in a linear length just to make you know trains look longer or the space seem larger kind of like a chapter division in a book you know like you have different chapters and in between each chapter uh, you have like in the 3d sense on a layout like a view block between so each finger is a scene and then you put a view block view block view block and you can compress and expand on that concept however you like like that's the up to the individual right but uh, before i go up to the layout and sort of have a look there and see what i'm sort of doing or trying to achieve. Um, I just want to talk about trees just for like a minute here. So this is a cottonwood tree uh, that I've modeled. I modeled several of them that I'm going to be using in the foreground uh, as a view block. And then here's another example of a Douglas fir that I did. But this is more like this is a foreground tree as well. But notice I didn't model the top because you're not going to see it anyway because the valance is going to be, you know, down like this, right? So why I mean, in scale, if I was to model this, it would probably hit the top of the valance hood anyway. So like a train, a locomotive is about this high, which like this tree's like, you know, 180 feet high. Like that's common in the Pacific Northwest. So people think, you know, they're always shocked, right? They're sort of uh, confronted with cognitive dissonance, you know. They can't accept new information. But th these trees are completely in scale. In fact, I've shortened them like for HO scale, right? Like this tree right here, I did model the top, uh, is um, actually in reality, the cottonwoods down by the river here are actually 150 feet plus high black cottonwoods in Canada or North America, but mostly on the coast here up in the Pacific Northwest. So I shortened this tree for the purposes of the layout, but the train, well, I mean, you'll see, it's like this. Now, normally someone would say, oh, the trees are too big. Like I had that early on and I never got into it too much because I'm not going to like argue like a mute point. No, they're not too big. Like if you're uh, into scale models, like they're just not. We're just not used to seeing trees this large on a model because of we're, uh, mainstream indoctrination, meaning most model railroads uh, do an excellent job of trees and scenery, but we're always shortening things. And then it depends on the region too, right? Like back east, like eastern United States and Canada, the trees are smaller. You know, it's not until you get to the west coast that you get really, really large trees. So just before I jump up to the layout, let me just mention two books because people have asked about them before. So this is the one book that I've uh, been using, Tree Book, Learning to Recognize Trees of British Columbia. I'll, I'll put the ISBN number up here for you so you can locate this particular book. But it's uh, a fairly sort of simple book, but it's good basic information on trees, uh, not just in British Columbia, but uh, down, uh, you know, probably right down through the Pacific Northwest to Northern California and, of course, the, you know, the California Redwoods, etc. So this is a good little book. And then there's this book here I just found. It was in a box. You know how you go through a box and you find stuff? Anyway, The Guide to Trees of Canada and North America by Alan Mitchell, illustrated by David Moore. And this is an excellent book, like my goodness, um, like the color photos or the artist renderings uh, and the information is very uh, layman type, you know, and it's just look at the needles, how it shows, you know, like they're beautiful and the bark and the color and everything, you know, just a great book. OK, so uh, I'll also put the ISBN number up in the corner here for this book as well. And so uh, we're going to go up to the layout now, and uh, 
Now we're just going to have a look and I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, in this case, see-through view blocks. Trees that are modeled like this that are not full, but you can actually, like they do create a view block, but there's depth to them and you, you can still see through like the scene behind it, like trains, etc. Okay. Okay then, so that's the see-through view block and you can see that it's, you know, it's about 14 inches wide by 16 inches high, All right? That's the viewing aperture of the upper valance uh, to the lower fascia, which will even be lower than this, that when you're live here, like you don't notice it. Like you might, you know, from a different perspective on social media, it, it can't be conveyed in the same way, but you can see that a view block makes a layout feel larger, okay? Um, especially the smaller shelf layout, you want to try to implement aids like this because it just makes the whole scene feel more immersive and um, larger. And be because you can see through it, uh, you don't rob yourself of your trains of viewing your favorite locomotives or rolling stock or whatever. So, you know, you can do that with a building if you want, right? It's up to you. Like every layout's different. Like not every layout is designed like this. Like this is a horseshoe shaped shelf layout. So when you walk in, like as you turn and look, you're always seeing the layout from a center position. There's no duck unders. There's nothing. You just walk into the room. That's what I love about it. That's for another discussion, duck unders, but I'm not interested in those. I want to walk into my world with my coffee in my hand, sit down at my bench, enjoy, stand up, work, sit back down, is very comforting, very um, relaxing way to uh, build a model railroad. And I can basically feature any locomotive, any piece of rolling stock, whatever I want in the realm of the world that I create that I'm content with. Because if I was at this location live, uh, it would take me quite a bit to cover all this ground. Like the whole, you know, um, like distance, like the whole length of the layout um you know there's quite a bit going on you know way past this way obviously i'm going to be talking about this just in closing about this section here next okay as a part two of my uh layout planning okay i want to talk to you about this there's a lot of things i'd like to share about that and try to answer some questions and then of course there's this scene here which is the beginning of section two for those of you that don't know and then it sort of ends right there by the auto rack in there. And that's a whole another chapter, um, you know, that I'll be getting into probably this summer. So, okay. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, watching. I appreciate your subscriptions. I appreciate your views and your, all your comments down below. And for those of you that are not aware, check the homepage, uh, Boomer Diorama. There's like, I don't know, 300 plus for sure videos, tutorials that cover all of this, the making of the trees, everything, everything pretty much I've covered. Okay. So happy modeling. And I hope that you have a great day.